the Battle of Crete and the Cretan Holocausts. On April 25, 1941, Allied forces of the British Commonwealth landed in the port of Suda with few weapons because they had retreated from continental Greece. The chief of the Allied forces was General Freinberg, a New Zealander hero of World War I. On May 20, 1941, the German operation to occupy Crete, Operation Mercury, was unleashed on Crete. The German commanding general student directed the operation. The Battle of Crete was the first mainly airborne invasion in military history. Also, it was the first time the Allies made use of intelligence from decrypted German messages from the Enigma machine broken by the team of Alan Turing. And also, it was the first time German troops encountered mass resistance from a civilian population and suffered huge losses. On the ninth day of Cretan resistance, Hitler wondered, why is Crete still resisting while a country as big as France lost the war in eight days? Cretans, with a long history of opposition to violence, invasion and slavery, resisted the German attack. Most civilians went into action, armed only with what they found in their kitchens and barns. For the first time in world history, a civilian population fought an invading army, a fight justified by the 1907 Hague Convention. After 10 days of fighting, Crete fell. That was a pyrrhic victory of Germany at the expense of 6,000 elite German combatants, 220 German aircrafts totally destroyed and 150 seriously damaged. Crete was taken, but students admitted that Crete was the death of the airborne force. And that was the precursors of the people's armed resistance in Europe. The Battle of Crete was the beginning of the German tragedy, which climaxed at El Alamein and Stalingrad. Kriegs lifted the spirit of the Allies. London Times. The Battle of Crete was the most exciting event of World War II and the apotheosis of human heroism. Moscow Radio Station. You fought unarmed against armor and you won. Small versus big and you prevailed. It could not have been done otherwise because you're Kriegs. We save time to defend ourselves. As Russians and as human beings, we thank you. Patrick Lefebvre on behalf of England. During the Battle of Crete, the courage and spirit of the Cretans filled the pages of the world press. This battle became a legend, and in the eyes of the whole world, the word Cretan became synonymous with the words warrior and hero. Tokyo newspaper. We propose as a matter of supreme honor to create an extraordinary order of the Knights of Crete to honor with a special medal every citizen, every soldier and every officer who took part in the most glorious ba battle of history, Battle of Crete. To quote Thucydides' version of Pericles' funerary oration from 430 BC, Andron Hari Pifanon Pasagitaphos, the whole earth is the grave of great men. He who does not know the facts may think that these are exaggerations, but the listener who knows the facts will think that what is said does not do justice to what transpired. Immediately after the fall of Crete, in retaliation, the Germans executed unarmed civilians, 6,500 men, 1,100 women and 869 children in several Cretan towns and villages. Student and Gering ordered a wave of reprisals against the unarmed local population in violation of the Hague Conference of 1907. In the meantime, Cretan women although they had lost fathers, husbands and sons, honoured the dead German soldiers. They washed and buried them. 
like genuine offspring of Sophocles and Tigone, because the dead is not an enemy anymore, but a brother waiting to be buried. On May 23rd, the Germans leveled one third of the city of Heraklion. Heraklion in May 1941 was a city of ruins, part familiar to the Germans who five years earlier did the same in Guernica during the Spanish Civil War. Greece unfortunately did not have Pablo Picasso to capture the horror of the bombing of Cretan cities. On the same day, swarms of German bombers covered the sky of Rethmelon, which bombarded the city and its surroundings for five hours. The houses became ruins. A thick shroud of blood smoke covered the city. Only the two churches were saved as if by a miracle. The city was abandoned by the inhabitants and the authorities. Also, the Germans turned the city of Hania into a pile of ruins and then went on an orgy of looting, abuse and rape. The Germans erected a monument in Hania in 1941, which the Cretans called Bad Bird. It's a copy of the Luftwaffe paratroopers emblem, a bad taste Nazi aesthetics monument with references to the German bigotry that distracted Europe to the greater Germany. As if bombarding the three major cities in the island of Crete was not enough, the Germans went on with several massacres and over 40 holocausts. Several war crimes and crimes against humanity were committed by the Germans in the island of Crete. I will leave this presentation to only a few examples. The day after the occupation of Crete, on June 2nd, Hermann Goering ordered the Germans to invade the village Kondomari. The Germans arrested 25 unarmed male residents, ages between 18 and 50, and executed them in cold blood, without any due process. In retaliation for the participation of Cretans in the Battle of Crete, the massacre was recorded by a war correspondent for the German army propaganda. Next day, on June 3rd, Germans raised to the ground the village of Kandanos and executed 300 Cretans. The Germans printed the crime in three signs, one of them states, for the brutal murder of German paratroopers, mountain commandos and engineers by men, women, children and priests, and for resisting the Great Reich, Kandanos was leveled never to be rebuilt. In the archives one reads, there was a smell of burnt flesh because people and animals were burned. German soldiers killed all unarmed civilians they came upon as they moved from north to south to Paleochora on the Libyan Sea. On September 14, 1943, reprisals were ordered by the commander of the fortress of Crete, General Miller, nicknamed the Butcher of Crete. The massacre in Vianos villages lasted three days. Germans killed 461 inhabitants, among them disabled, women, children, babies. They burned 10 villages and blew up 980 houses. In 1945, Nikos Kazatzakis, a member of the Committee for the Verification of Cruelty in Crete, which was formed by the United Nations, described the atrocities of Wehrmacht. He writes, Germans arrested children and tortured them to testify against the guerrillas, slashed their cheeks with a bayonet, pulled out their teeth, and finally slaughtered them then they hanged their heads on the wall. In Krivatas, the German execution detachment of Vaho Samira and Kefalogresos, drunken, danced on the corpses of the dead to the tune of a phonograph. Note that these monstrous acts were committed by the German army, the Wehrmacht, rather than the Nazis. 
There was not a house in the whole province that was not mourning. There were as many people killed as black crosses on the doors. A black clad woman said to a German commander, Commandante, all mothers are in pain and this pain will destroy Germany. The German Sergeant Major Friedrich Schubert was notorious for the brutality of the crimes he committed. Schubert and his accomplices threw into the fire women who refused to disclose their husband's hideouts. One of them in the village of Kalisitya, Mrs. Grindaki, eight months pregnant, was holding a baby boy in her arms. She threw him under a nearby olive tree before she caught fire. Her eight years old daughter at the time told me recently her story. Seventy years later, I still hear the screams of my mother burning alive. I took my baby brother and ran to the mountain because the Germans were after us. I was hiding the baby under my armpit so that his sobs were muffled. With a handful of rice I boiled in a tin can, I kept him fed for days. The Order of Mille is a short version of the role of Anoye in the Second World War. Because Anoye is the center of English espionage. Because Anoyans murdered the surgeon of Yenikave, Joseph Ollenhauer. Actually, Joseph Ollenhauer was killed by the Cretans to free the 90 Anoyan kids and women that he kept as hostages. Because they carried out the sabotage of Damasta. And because they helped in the abduction of General Kreipe, we ordered the leveling of the city and the execution of every male Hanoian found inside it. There were 940 houses in Hanoia, not one was left intact. For 22 days and nights, the Germans were looting and blowing up houses. They butchered 24 elderly and disabled. Kazantzakis wrote about the Cretans. I expected to hear sobs and found unruly, unyielding souls. During the German occupation, Mount Psyloritis became a nest of people who thirsted for freedom. The Cretan resistance, among others, organized the movement of hundreds of allies, British, Australians and New Zealanders, to the southern coast to escape by sea to Cairo. In the mountains of Lassithi, there was an organized guerrilla group with a baker, a shoemaker, a priest. Communication between isolated hideouts in the mountains of Crete was served by messengers. One of them was the shepherd Georgius Tsihoudakis, who later wrote the book The Cretan Runner, translated by Lee Fremont. Tsihoudakis ran from the northwest to the southwest coast of Crete in one night, through rough ravines to avoid the Germans, a distance of over 100 kilometers. The kidnapping of the commanding officer of Crete, Heinrich Kreipe, was an operation executed jointly by the British Special Operation Executive and the local resistance members in Crete. The British Major Patrick Lee Fermor conceived the plan. Fermor loved Crete and was trusted by the Cretans. They called him Philadem. He selected Captain Moss as well as Manolis Paterakis and Yorgos Tirakis, who were Cretans trained in sabotage in the Middle East. They, in turn, selected the rest of the Cretan team, 13 in total. Kreiper, as commanding officer of Crete, lived in the Villa Ariadne, built by the English archaeologist Evans in 1900 during the excavation of Knossos. From there, he came daily to Anarchanis to his headquarters. Fermor and most disguised as Germans stopped Kreipe's Opel Capitan with a stop sign and a red light so it would be considered a routine check. Fermor stuck his pistol into Kreipe's chest announcing to him that he was a prisoner of the British. The guerrilla of Anoia assisted them in crossing the snowy mound Psyloridis. 
all villagers along the way helped them. 22 days later, they reached the south coast from where they were picked up by a vessel of the Allies. General Kreiber was brought from Cairo to Canada, where he remained as a prisoner of war until 1947, when he was released. The abduction was followed by mass executions and burning of Cretan villagers by the Germans. General André, nicknamed the executioner of Crete, responsible for massacres of hundreds of Cretans, left behind the following testimony. There is something mythical about the Cretans when faced with a firing squad. A viewer cannot help but admire them. In no other people have I seen such contempt for death and so much love for liberty. General André was sentenced to six times life in prison, which was changed to four years and was finally granted amnesty by King Paul, the husband of Queen Frederica, who was Kaiser's granddaughter and a member of Nazi youth earlier in her life. The following organizations participate in our Committee on German Debts, International Hellenic Association, Canadian Hellenic Congress, Hellenic American National Council, the Levani Foundation.